When you do retire, are you going to do that thing where you go on a goodwill tour of all the teams you played against? Dude, and... that's just not in my nature, man. So when you retire, do you think it will be unannounced? It will be something that you do abruptly? Absolutely. You know, I, I don't want to play through a year where everybody knows you're retiring and they kind of give you the whole swan song, like, you know, and I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Okay, Kobe. Social media blew up when Kobe announced his retirement at the end of the season. Making his final appearance at the Palace of Alderman Hill. Playing his final game in Boston. For the final time, number 24 on the floor. So Kobe went back on that promise as he announced his intention to retire just one month into his final season. And he got the biggest farewell tour that I have seen since becoming an NBA fan. The farewell tour has become somewhat of a due courtesy for legends who are leaving the game of basketball. More recently, D. Wade had one where he swapped jerseys with everyone, except for Emmanuel Moutier. Dirk had one as well, although he didn't announce his retirement until his second to last game. And Paul Pierce, well, eh. Chasing that farewell tour! But while the farewell tour is becoming more common nowadays, it's not a new trend in the league, and Kobe certainly wasn't the first one. When Michael Jordan played his final season in the NBA, there was a different atmosphere in the arenas when his team came into town. And let me clarify, we're talking about the third time he played his final season, as he retired both in 1993 and 1998, but came out of retirement twice. The first two times he retired, there was no farewell tour as the team was competing for and won the championship on both occasions. In his 02-03 season, ultimately his last, the Wizards were still falling short of the playoffs. Nonetheless, they were the second most watched team in the entire league. Michael Jordan's farewell tour was different from Kobe's and Dwayne Wade's as he never announced his retirement during the season. However, lack of team chemistry and lack of success as well as a clearly aging game led fans to determine that this would be the last season they would see him play, which caused a massive following. Tributes were paid to him in his final visits to the NBA stadiums around the league. And in his final game against Chicago, he received a four-minute standing ovation from the crowd. Which just doesn't quite look right in a Wizards uniform. In his final visit to Miami, the Heat did something pretty unusual. They retired his number in honor of his legendary career in the league which was the first number the team had retired for a player who never played for them. And that no player ever again will ever wear number 23 for the Miami Heat here. In his final All-Star game, he was not voted in as a starter, but as a reserve. This did not sit well with certain NBA players, and T-Mac and Allen Iverson insisted that he take their starting position. MJ rejected the offers and tried to avoid the festivities turning into a love fest for him. But as Vince Carter had been injured for most of the season, he eventually convinced MJ to take his starting position from him. And about that love fest he tried to avoid? Well, Mariah Carey did the introductions for the 2003 All-Star Game. And just take a look at the dress she wore. On the court and in the public, fans, media, players and organizations were honoring Michael in all ways they could, still not being quite sure if this was going to be his last season. However, off the court and in the Wizards organization, things were not shining so bright. Apart from being a player, Michael Jordan was also the president of basketball operations for the Wizards and was orchestrating the draft and management of the team that he put around himself. But in contrast to Michael Jordan the player, Michael Jordan, the executive, is pretty far from the greatest executive of all time. While Michael Jordan was the center of attention of a mediocre to bad Washington Wizards team, behind the scenes of his farewell tour, things were highly tense and dysfunctional. Michael would consistently criticize his teammates for a lack of performance and effort, which was a weird dynamic as he was also their boss. The most notable example was Kwame Brown, which Michael Jordan had selected with the number one pick in the 2001 draft to play alongside him. I'm not going to go into that right now, but let's just say Kwame wasn't great. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. Furthermore, he traded for two of his buddies, Jerry Stackhouse and Larry Hughes, whose play was 
let's just call it uninspiring. Nonetheless, back to the farewell tour. His final NBA game ever was in Philadelphia against the 76ers. He didn't put on a massive show such as Kobe's 60 point final game at the Staples and he checked out late in the third quarter. However, the crowd wanted one more encore and started shouting, we want Mike. So he was subbed back in late in the fourth. Eventually, he checked out one final time to a three minute standing ovation from the fans, the players from both teams, and even the officials. Quads. MJ says goodbye. He's done. So you would imagine that Michael Jordan departed the stadium on a hot rod taking into basketball heaven like in the ending of Greece. Nope. To the astonishment of people around the league, Michael Jordan was fired as team president by the owner of the team, and the minority stake he had, which he had to forego when he became an active player again, was not returned to him. Michael had fully expected to continue as team president when the season was over, and saw himself as a long-term piece of the Wizards management team, but the owner had other plans. So his final act with the Wizards was to storm out of the meeting where he had just been told that his services to the team are no longer needed. And so ended Michael Jordan's career once and for all, not in a championship parade, but in betrayal and mismanagement. Either way, he's still the greatest player to ever play the game. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and a comment below. And if you enjoy the NBA and its history, subscribe for more content.